Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at the Peanut Mini Jig by Intelligent Fixings. Right, so what is the Peanut Mini Jig? Well, the claim by the manufacturer Intelligent Fixings is that it is a simple jig that can create three different types of invisible joints with relative ease. We will test this theory later on in this video when I use the jig to create the joints, but for now you're probably looking at this thing and thinking, how does it work? I know because that's exactly how I reacted and why I agreed to take a look when I was contacted by the local distributor Hardware Center and asked to give my honest opinion on this piece of hardware. So at the end of this video if you want any more info or you want to check out pricing and availability I will put all the relevant links in the description of this video. Right, so as I said, the jig claims to be able to create three different types of invisible joints and it does so by means of either dowels, floating tenons or dominoes or the intelligent fixings peanuts Now to make each one of these joints, the jig will obviously serve as a guide and it needs to be paired with a power tool to create the actual cut. Now for dowels you would use it with a drill and for the floating tenons and the peanuts you would use a router now guys, at this stage you're probably still wondering how this jig works and there is quite a bit of additional hardware still required before we can actually start making the joints. So there's a lot of information and I want to make it as easy as possible to follow so I'm going to break this video up into segments. First I'm going to take a look at the peanut joining method. What it is and how it works because if you're anything like me you probably haven't seen it before. Then we'll take a look at the jig. What do you get in the box when you purchase it? I'll take a look at the additional hardware you require to create each one of the joints before moving over to the operational test, making the joints, seeing how they work and how strong they are. Now guys, I haven't used this jig myself, I obviously studied up on how it works, but a lot of the stuff I'm going to be using today will be coming out of its packaging for the first time. So it will be a real experience and you will be experiencing it for the first time with me. Now at the end of this video, after I've covered all the information, I will give you my honest opinion on this jig and how well it actually works. Okay, so first up, the peanut joining method. What is it? Well, it's a joining method that makes use of these little nylon studs called peanuts. Exactly why it's called a peanut, I'm not sure, but to use this to join two panels or two pieces of wood together, the peanut is embedded into the one panel to create a type of male or protruding profile. In the opposite panel or piece of wood, a T-slot or a keyhole type hole is created using the jig. Once the two panels are married together, the peanut will slot into the T-slot, locking the two panels together. But what use does someone like me or you have for this type of joining method? Well, the claim by the manufacturer is that a project can be manufactured in component form in a workshop like this, then flat back to be transported and assembled on site using no additional equipment, maybe a mallet to knock everything in place. They then go on to claim that the project can be disassembled and reassembled numerous times without losing strength on the joint, but this remains to be seen. Now according to the Intelligent Fixings website, the peanut can be used in stock 15.3 millimeters thick and thicker and can be used to make strong joints in hardwood, softwood, MDF, chipboard and plywood. Right, so with that out the way, I want to take a look at what's in the box. What do you get when you purchase the peanut mini jig? The jig comes in a soft nylon type carry case which is padded so it will provide some sort of shock protection. In the bag you will find the jig body, the jig fence, two M6 countersunk cap screws for attaching the fence and an allen key to tighten them. You will also find two gravity stops, now how they work will be demonstrated in a moment. Also in the bag is a 6mm drill bush insert for the jig, along with a 6mm wood bit, a stop collar and an allen key. You will also find a small cotton bag for storing all these smalls, and of course, a user manual. Now guys, at this point, I actually just want to take a moment to talk about the manual. Yes, it's just a few hard paper pages stapled together, but this manual actually does a fantastic job with illustrations of explaining exactly how to use this jig. This is something I haven't seen in a product in some time, and that's why I wanted to shed some light on it. The manual includes info like jig and tool setup, joint types, joint strength, and then goes on to show exactly how to create each joint. That's the peanut joint, the loose tenon or domino, and the dowel. 
Now guys, at this point, I'm able to give you my first bit of critical feedback. With the hardware provided in the basic kit, the only joint you are able to manufacture or create is a 6mm dull joint. Additional hardware is required to create any of the other joints or even an 8 or a 10mm dull joint. For example, supplied with the basic kit is the 6mm drilling bush insert, which you can use to create the 6mm dull joint. If you wanted to create an 8 or a 10mm dull joint, you would need to get an 8 or a 10mm drill bush insert. For the floating tenons or dominoes, you will need a spiral upcut router bit. Then of course you're going to need a different size upcut bit depending on the domino, either a 6, a 8 or a 10. And finally to create the peanut joints, you are going to need the intelligent fixings peanut bit. And then we are almost there, we still need one more thing. To create the floating tenons or the peanut joints, we are going to need a 30mm guide bush for our router. So, why do they make us buy all these things separately? Because, let's be honest, it's a little bit annoying. Now, there's three reasons I can think of. I don't know if it's the actual reasons, but this is just what makes sense to me. Firstly, the router guide bush, the spiral upcut bit, the various size wood bits required for the dulls or the stop collars could be things that you already have in your workshop and will make the set unnecessarily expensive if you do. Or like in my case, the router guide bush doesn't even fit on my machine. Now I don't have something similar, so as a replacement I'm going to go with the Milescraft Universal Adapter Plate and Bush Set, which is fairly inexpensive. Next up is the various drilling or router bits required to operate the jig. Yes, they do seem to be of high quality, but over time they are likely to get dull, maybe break if they catch a piece of embedded metal, or in the unlikely case that they are dropped on the floor, in which case you wouldn't need to replace the entire set, but simply buy the required bit. The third reason I can think of is user preference. Maybe you don't want to use the mini jig to create all the different joints it's able to create. Maybe if you're like me, you only want to use it to create the peanut joints or the floating tenons. In my case, I prefer to use my little joint mate to create dull joints. It's quick and easy and it doesn't require a crazy amount of hardware. So I don't need to buy the additional size bush inserts or drill bushes for the mini jig. Alright guys, so with all of that out the way, we are basically ready to start with the practical test, which I think is what all of you are waiting for. Before I do that, however, I just quickly want to demonstrate. According to the manual, all three joining methods can be used to join boards in a variety of applications. Like this, like this, along the edge, or even along the face. It can also be used to join along a mitered or beveled edge. In the case of the peanut joining system, for the mitered or beveled joint, you won't be using the normal peanut 2 connector, but instead would be swapping it out for the peanut 2 short. Right, so to get started on cutting joints, I need to set up the jig, and the first step in setting up the jig is the fence. Depending on the joint placement, the jig will either be used with or without the fence. For most of the joints, the operator will have the assistance of the fence to help align the jig. Depending on the thickness of the stock or the angle of the cut, the orientation of the fence or the way it attaches to the jig will change. The only scenario where you won't have the assistance of the fence is when you want to cut a joint into an area of a board or a plank where there is no edge to reference using the fence. In those scenarios, you would create a guideline where you want to create your joint and then using the guide indicators on the jig, you will align your jig and secure it using clamps. And in a scenario where the joint is located towards the center of a large panel where you can't reach it with a clamp, the jig can be secured to the panel using these two countersunk holes and a couple of screws. Then once the panel or piece of wood is attached or joined, it will conceal the holes created by the screws. Okay guys, so first up I'm going to demonstrate the dowels and the floating tenons because the setup is pretty much the same. The biggest difference is what we insert into the working area of the jig. For the dowels we're going to use the drill guide bush with the drill and for the floating tenons we're going to use the router with a router guide bush. Something else to keep track of when you are setting up the jig for either dull floating tenons or even later on peanuts is the grouping of the gravity stops. There are four holes but you are only going to use two. 
For dowel joints, the gravity stops will be grouped like this, or even peanut joints later on. And for the floating tenons, the gravity stops will be grouped like this. The reason for this, when creating dowel joints or even peanut joints, the drill bush insert is going to be used, which is off-center. So you will group the gravity stops so that the bush is in the middle of the two gravity stops. When you create the slot for the floating tenons, the slot is going to be in the center of this cutout. So you can group the gravity stops like that to place the slot in the middle. Okay, so after my jig is set up, the next step is aligning the jig with the stock so that I can make my first cut for all three of the joining methods. I'm going to use the fence to reference this surface and I'm going to use the gravity stops to reference this surface. Then I'm going to secure the jig with clamps. And as I said, because I'm grouping the gravity stops like that, I'm going to place the drill bush insert like this so that it is in the center of the two. Now guys, in all three scenarios, or when creating either one of the three joints, good quality clamps is critical, because if the jig moves while cutting the slot or drilling the hole, the alignment on the joint will be out. When you don't have an edge to reference using the gravity stops, you are going to use the notches on the inside of the cutout to align your joint. Okay, so at this stage you can see that the holes aren't exactly in the center of the plank. So the orientation of the jig during setup needs to be kept in mind when drilling the holes on the plank that we're going to be joining to this one. To demonstrate this, I'm going to put the second plank in the vise with this one, but this is obviously not necessary when you are actually creating the joint. Okay, so this time I'm reversing the jig, placing the fence on the opposite end. Thanks to the gravity stop, I know I am in exactly the same position. And once I've got the drill bush in, I can clamp it and drill. Okay, so for the first joint, the two panels fit together quite nicely, it went together nice and tight, and the alignment seems to be good. The biggest challenge here was keeping track of the alignment of the jig. Right guys, so next up I'm going to join the board over here, and then one like that. For this one, I'm going to change the reference surfaces. This time I'm going to have the fence along this surface, and the jig face along this surface. And for the one in the middle here, I won't have the fence, so I'm going to add some guidelines to align the jig during the setup. Now finding a place to clamp down the jig can sometimes be a bit tricky, which is the reason for the weird shape of the jig, to give the operator increased clamping zones. As for the circular shaped lines on your jig face, this is to show the operation area of a standard router base. So when you are creating floating tenons or peanut slots, you know that you need to place your clamps outside of these lines so that your router doesn't collide with your clamps. So the corner joint went together just as nicely as the edge joint and once again jig setup was key. Now when creating joints towards the center of a plank or a panel where you do not have the luxury of using an edge to reference using the fence, you would need to add a guideline or draw a guideline and align the jig using the guide indicators on the jig face. Now in these scenarios it can be a little bit tricky to align the jig using the jig or line indicators but it didn't seem to affect the quality of the joint too much. And just like the two previous joints the panels fit together nicely. 
Okay, so that's a very quick and basic rundown of how you would go about creating dowel joints using this jig. Now next I'm going to do the floating tenons which is exactly the same as the dowels in setup. The only difference is instead of the drill bush we're going to use the bush guide on the router and instead of drilling holes we are going to create slots. Okay, so up until this point, as I said, our setup is very similar to that of the dolls, except the placement of the gravity stops, and instead of drilling a hole, we are now going to create a slot. Now guys, for the first few mortises, I did a type of plunge sweep movement with the router, but I realized this didn't give me the nicest quality cut. So later I started doing a multi-plunge cut and just cleaned up the excess with a sweep. At this point you are probably able to see that the quality of the cut is not fantastic and here I am still using the plunge sweep technique. In a moment you will see the quality of the cut greatly increase when I move over to the other technique. But even with the poor quality cut the joints still went together nicely in terms of alignment and strength. Okay, so the final floating tenon went together just as well as the other joints and I'm starting to realize that the biggest trick to this jig is keeping track of the setup and doing it correctly before you start cutting. So just a quick round on of the joints we already created. For the 6mm dowel joint, everything you need is included in the basic kit, but if you want to do 8 and 10mm dowels, you are going to have to buy the bush inserts. And for the floating tenon or domino, besides the basic kit, you are going to have to get a 30mm guide bush for your router and the required spiral upcut bit. Right, so the peanut joining system. Now earlier I misspoke when I said that you are going to be using a router to create the peanut joint. In actuality, it's going to be a combination of the two joints we already did. To fit the peanut, we are going to use a drill and to cut the slot, we are going to use the router. Okay, so to get started, we are going to install the peanuts onto the first panel. And to install the peanuts, they need to be seated into a 6mm hole, similar to a dowel hole. And I think that's why the 6mm drilling bush is included in the basic set. As for the technique, we're going to use the jig with the bush insert exactly the same way as we did with the dowels, except this time it is very important to note the orientation of the gravity stops. We are either going to pair these two or these two holes together. Now in the manual, all of the joints are created by pairing the gravity stops on these or these holes, but it is only on the peanut joining method where it is critically important. With the gravity stops paired like this, the drill bush insert would be placed like this, placing the hole in the center of the two gravity stops. This is when we are going to create slots in that direction. If we are going to create the slots in this direction, the gravity stops goes to the other two holes and the bush insert turns around.
Okay, so I'm going to be creating my slots in this direction. That's why I've got my gravity stops over there and I'm going to be using my drill bush this way around so it's in the center. So now I can drill my hole to install my peanut. Drilling the holes for the peanuts, the jig setup and use is identical to that of the 6mm dowels. For additional strength, the peanut is secured with a 3 or 3.5 mm screw. It is very important to correctly set up the depth stop for the peanut bit when creating the peanut joint slots, or else the joint will not fit together correctly. So we are going to use the same gravity stop pairing as we did to create the holes for the peanuts. And the picture shows that we need to plunge on this side, move over, come back and lift to create the T-slot. So the peanut joint seems to fit together quite nicely and creates a surprisingly strong joint. Okay guys, so with the edge joint created, I am quickly going to do the corner and the face slots using the exact same setup technique as I've used with all the other joints, so I'm just going to run through it. So, in summary, everything you require to embed or cut the peanut into a wood panel or a wood board is included in the basic kit. But to cut the peanut slot you need to buy the Intelligent Fixings peanut bit, and if you don't already have one, a 30mm router bush. And in the case of the peanut too short, you will need a 5mm wood bit and a 5mm drill bush insert. Now the peanut joint seems to be quite strong but correctly setting up the depth stop on your router is extremely important in creating a quality joint. If you cut your slot too deep you are going to struggle to get the peanut slotted in place and if you cut it too shallow you're going to end up with a loose joint. Right so that's a brief summary of how you would go about using the peanut mini jig to create three different types of joints. Now guys I know in this video I threw out a lot of information. I tried to make it easy to follow so I hope that was the case. 
As for my final opinion about the Peanut Mini Jig, well considering its compact size I'd say it's quite versatile in its ability to create three different types of invisible joints and when paired with good quality clamps it does so accurately and creates a strong joint in all three cases. As for the peanut joining system, well it's an interesting concept and it could potentially be a game changer in various applications like off-site manufacturing. On the slightly more negative side is all the additional hardware required that the user needs to keep track of and when you pair this with a setup which is not exactly straightforward, I would say the jig is not super user friendly. Or maybe it's just me but I can imagine it being really easy to make a mistake when using the jig. Something as small as a gravity stop in the wrong hole will completely misalign a joint. Overall however I do like the jig and I'll probably be using it more going forward. It does what it claims and I'll just have to keep track of what I'm doing so I don't make a mistake. Up to now I've only really been using dowels when I need to align and join panels in an invisible way. I'm not really crazy about pocket holes, nothing against people that use them or like them, I'm just not a big fan. So I'm glad that I now have more options available to me to create invisible joints. Now guys if you want to know more about this jig I will drop some links in the description of this video. Then for the local guys, Hardware Center has set up a discount for Woodshop Junkies viewers. All the relevant links and the coupon code will be in the description of the video as well if you want to check out pricing and availability. And that's pretty much it for the jig. Until I made this video I haven't used anything like it myself so it was a fun and interesting experience for me. Right and as for the channel and what you guys can expect in the near future, soon I will be posting a final update on the Stump Coffee Table project based on your guys feedback. I'm also working on a pixel art nightlight for my son's room which should be a fun project and in addition to this I'm going to be replacing the wooden garage door in my workshop. So any suggestions on how I can reclaim or repurpose the wood from the old garage door would be greatly appreciated. I was thinking a herringbone type table but maybe you have a better idea so drop your suggestion in the comment section down below. I will consider all the input and will post a video once I get to the project. So if you aren't subscribed yet and you want to see that or any of my other future videos you should do that now. And that's pretty much it for this video. Once again a big thank you to Hardware Center for letting us check out the jig. I hope the video was informative and that you guys enjoyed it. So till next time. Cheers.